Howdy Pre-Cal, it's Ms. Kosh. I am going to start our introduction on conic sections. We're going to begin with circles. So I have a, a previous video. I typed up the notes and made them a little prettier. So um, hopefully that helps you while you're learning from home. Um, first of all, every conic section can be defined both by how we slice a cone and in terms of distance. So notice if I have what it's actually two cones. I've got one cone right on top of the other, as you see in this image right here, and if I slice it where it's parallel to the base, um, and I have one slice parallel to the base, then I get, and I look at that little cross section, I get a circle, okay? And so that's how, when we slice the cone, it's parallel to the base. If, um, we can also define it by distance. So let's think about this for a second. Um, pretend I can draw. Wow, that's a terrible circle. Okay, let's say we've got a point uh, HK, and we want um, a circle is going to be the set of all points in a plane equidistant from a given point. So our given point is that one right here. We'll say we call this distance the radius. And so let's find um, this is the point XY. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to be able to write an equation um, that has that lets us find x and y for all these points. So any point x, y on my circle, I could move that around the circle if I wanted to. Um, so keep in mind, we have the distance formula, and the distance formula allows us, well, here's a quick little reminder on the distance formula. Um, so what it is, is the distance is equal to, basically it all comes from Pythagorean theorem. It's the square root of the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. Or you might have seen that this would be equal to x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And to be honest, it doesn't matter if it's x2 that comes first or second, because when you square it, everything becomes positive. Okay, so we're going to use these two points that they gave us, hk and xy. And so when we go to define those, we know that the radius is going to be that distance between them. That's going to be equal to the square root of, well, our x values. It's x minus that h. Notice how I'm, I'm subtracting those squared. Plus, well, my y values now are y minus k squared. That's the distance formula. So that is the set of all points equidistant from a given point in a plane. Uh, we have to say in a plane. See, uh, see if you can tell me, bonus point for whoever tells me why we have to state in a plane. Um, I'm not going to answer that question. Go figure it out. Okay, but what we really like to use is we don't want to deal with all these square roots. So what we'll do is we square both sides, and that gives us that r squared is equal to x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. And that is a circle. That's the equation of a circle. So notice I wrote it. Um, usually we see the r squared at the end, but here it is in this box. And so the center of that circle is going to be the point hk, and its radius is going to be r. So I have a few examples. We'll see how far I get before I start another video. So on this one, write uh, excuse me, graph and write the equation of a circle with center, negative 1, 5, and radius 3. Okay, so negative 1, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I, I think I'm getting old because all of a sudden I have, I have a hard time counting, but yeah, or like seeing the lines. I can count, I just can't see the lines. So that's our center. So the first thing I'm going to do is graph that center, and then I have a radius of 3. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Hopefully I can 1, 2, 3 figure out where the right place. So notice 1, 2, 3. It's very easy to move in the in the x direction, both positive and negative, in the y direction, positive and negative 3. And then I'm just going to try and do the best I can to turn that thing into a circle. Yours don't have to be perfect, but they should be about as good as mine, um, which you'll notice is not perfect. Okay, so there's the graph. We've done that part, and now let's write the equation. So it's x minus, well, what's my center? My center was at negative 1, so that's plus 1 squared plus y minus, what's the y value? It was 5 squared is equal to, well, what's the radius squared? The 3 squared is 9, and we're done. If I put a question like that on your test or quiz, you should say thank you because they don't come too much easier than that. Sorry, I hate to break it to you. Next one. Okay, I think I tweaked it a tiny bit from the my, pre, my old example um, because the old example matched the previous problem. So this one, they're just saying graph x over 4 squared plus y over 4 squared equals 1. Okay, well, let's clean this up a little bit. We know that this becomes 
when I square, I can square both the numerator and the denominator. And now, it, this isn't the form that we are used to seeing things in. We want to set them, notice right here that there are no denominators. So if I just multiplied through, if I multiplied everybody by 16, then that cleans everything up quite nicely. I get x squared plus y squared equals 16. This tells me, well, notice I'm not adding anything. Um, well, here's another way to write this. I'm not adding or subtracting anything with the, the x and the y. So that shows me that my center is at 0, 0. So um, that's pretty straightforward. I would argue easy. 1, 2, 3, 4. I think that's 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 2, 3, 4. Notice how I graph all those. And I'm going to draw a lovely circle as best I can. Ah, I've done worse. OK, did I answer the question? I sure did. What's its center? 0, 0. What's its radius? 4. OK, the next few get a little bit more interesting. Write the equation of the circle with center, negative 4, 6, that is tangent to the y-axis. So what I want to do is just think about, OK, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, positive 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so I'm going to, that's my center. And it's tangent to the y-axis. So the y-axis is this one right through here. So we need a radius that gets me from this point, from that center, to that new, the new point on the y-axis. And that radius, that distance there, is 4. Okay, so at that point, it's pretty straightforward. We have x minus, we just said that r needs to equal 4. And our center is at negative 4, so minus a negative becomes plus positive 4 squared plus y minus 6 squared is equal to, we just said our radius is 4, 4 squared is 16, and we're done. Okay, hopefully the next ones will be a little more challenging. Um, okay, write the equation of a circle with center that that passes through the point. Okay, so on this one, we know h and k, but we don't know r. So you've got two choices. Um, so here, here's a, a sketch of what we're looking at. We're, we've got our point, I don't know, I don't really care where it is, and it passes through 3, negative 2. So the circle is going to do something, oh, that's terrible, but there's the basic idea of it. You've got two choices. One choice is to say, well, I know that it's going to be x minus 7 squared plus y minus 5 squared is going to equal r squared. Um, so you have your two options are either to plug in option 1. I'll do option 1 in red. Option 1 is to say, okay, um, option 1 is to plug in this point and say, okay, well, this becomes 3 minus 7 squared plus negative 2 minus 5 squared is equal to r squared. Well, th 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. Hopefully I can remember my addition and subtraction, my basic facts. OK, then that's negative 7 squared is 49. And so my r squared value is, hang on, I'm, this is not going to fit in my space. I wish I could do that on paper. Is anyone else with me on that? Where you wish you could like shrink things in and make it all work out nicely? Okay, that's 55. That's 65. So my r squared, um, I just got 65 is equal to r squared. So they just said write the equation. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. Here's my equation. Um, x minus 7 squared plus y minus 5 squared is equal to, well, r squared we just said was 65. Now, if they ask you what's the radius, you should tell them it's the square root of 65, but they didn't actually ask that question. Um, here's option two. And option two is to know that, that r is the distance between um, the point on the circle and the center. So I can just do the distance formula and say, okay, it's the square root of, um, well, I'm using those two points. It doesn't matter which one comes first. I just need to be, well, I don't even need to be consistent. 7 minus 3 squared plus 5 minus a negative 2 squared. This gives me the square root r is equal to the square root of, this is 16 plus, well, it better be the same thing that we just saw, 49 r is equal to the square root of 65. So now when you plug that in, squaring the square root, we get the same exact idea right here. To be perfectly honest with you, what would I choose to do on my own just for me? I don't know, maybe option one. There's nothing wrong with option two. Surprise me. I don't, you know, just do good math to a good answer. Um, moving on. Number five. Write the equation of the tangent line. Oh, okay to the circle x squared plus y squared equals 25 at the point 3, 4. So what I know from here is I know that this is a circle with the center at the origin 
radius of 5. Okay, so center at the origin, radius of 5. Uh, well, I've done worse. Um, so then they said at the point 3, 4. So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. That had better be on my circle. And if you think about it, this is a triple. This is one of the Pythagorean triples where I see this triangle. This, my radius, we know to be 5. This is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Okay, and then if it's going to be tangent to the circle, then that means that the tangent line, oh, well, you know what? I'm going to solve my problem this way. Watch this. Oh, what did it do? Undo. That's what I get for trying to be clever. Um, basically, what I was trying to do unsuccessfully was move this to actually like go through the point. Okay, pretend it goes through. Well, let's just make the point bigger if we can't hit it. Um, what I know, here's the point. The tangent line and the radius are perpendicular. So I can find the slope of my radius and then know that my, the slope of my tangent line is going to be the negative reciprocal. So slope of the radius is rise over run. Notice I'm rising four and running three. And so this little piece, oh, well, I just crossed off my five. Okay, whatever. That has a slope of rise over run, so four over three. And therefore, in green, I know that this guy has a slope of negative three-fourths. So now I can just rewrite this in as a, as a point. Uh, why did I say point? As a line. I need to write the equation of the line. So I can use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And I can plug in y minus 4 is equal to the new slope that we just found. x minus, what's the x value? 3. I can clean this up. Sometimes what I like to do is just use the slope formula and say the slope is equal to y minus y1 over x minus x1. Plug that in, so negative 3 fourths is equal to y minus 4 over x minus 3. The thing about this one is that I don't have to deal with fractions. Um, and so I have a negative 3x, negative 3 times negative 3 is a plus 9 equals 4y minus 16. So now from here, I can pretty easily go either to standard form or to slope-intercept form. So in standard form, I have to the I have to move this to the other side so that I well my x needs to be positive. So I've got a this becomes a three x. I'm thinking of moving it to the other side plus a four y, and then I need to move this sixteen to the other side. So sixteen plus nine is twenty five. Did I do that correctly? Um, well, hopefully I did. And the other option is to say um, I have this 4y is equal to negative 3x. Move that, that's plus 25, and then divide everybody by 4. And so I have a negative uh, 3 fourths x plus 25 fourths. And they didn't tell me which answer they want, and so either I'd give you multiple choice and I'd give you one or the other, or I would take either answer. So that's lovely. Let's look at the next one. Oh, good. We get to manipulate. Notice on this one, this is our last problem, right? On the whole page, there it goes. Okay. On this one, it is not in the form that we wanted to graph it in. Okay, so notice we've got something. Um, we've got this x minus h squared plus y minus k. I'm looking at this right here. Um, is equal to r squared. And down here, I have an x squared and y squared and then an x and a y. So what I have to do is I have to complete the square, but in two places. So here's what I like to do. I'll say x squared plus 6x plus, um, we'll do a box, plus, and I'm going to put the y stuff together, y squared minus 4y plus, and I, I, would, I want another box, but I don't want it to be a box because then I'd have to put the same thing in both. So I'm going to say plus a triangle is equal to, and let's move that 12 to the other side. Um, but if I add a box to one side, I have to add a box to the other side. If I add a triangle to one side, I have to add a triangle to the other side. And so now I can work with this part here with x, and I can work with this part here with y, and that gets me to my goal of having, oh, well, I'm unable to, what's going on? There it is. Of having the x stuff together and the y stuff together. Anyway, let's finish. Oh, I got an email. Great. Okay. So this becomes x plus 3, half of 6 is 3, 3 squared gives me a 9 in my box, there we go, plus y minus 2 squared, 2 squared is 4, is in my triangle. So now I'm at, what is that, 13 plus 12 is 25, or I could say 16 plus 9, oh, it's still 25. 
So, dun, 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 we have a circle with center at negative 3, positive 2, and its radius is 5. So I can graph that, negative 3, positive 2, 1, 2, 3.2, 2. I think that's there. And then I need to move 5 in every direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you get to hear me count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you are so lucky, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I think that's somewhat correct. And then pretend I can, well, okay, that's a terrible circle, but whatever, I don't really care. I mean, I do, but I don't. All right, good luck. Not going to lie, the easiest of the conics are the circles. So make sure that you practice and then you just stay up with this because it's only going to get more challenging. Good luck.